Virginia's newly elected lieutenant governor, Winsome Sears, utterly destroying the left's narrative after the media claimed racism is why Republicans won on Tuesday. This is about the fact that a good chunk of voters out there are okay with white supremacy. They're dangerous. They're dangerous to our national security because stoking that kind of soft white nationalism eventually leads to the hardcore stuff. But Sears, who was the first female and woman of color elected state to statewide office in Virginia, is hitting back. I'm destroying all the narratives about race. Look at me. Look at me. I am a heartbeat away from the governorship in case anything happens to the governor. And, and how are you going to tell me then I'm a victim? I wish Joy Reid would invite me on her show. I'm, let's see if she's woman enough to do that. I'd go in a heartbeat and we'd have a real discussion without Joy speaking about me behind my back, if you will. She talks about white supremacy. Does she know that I ran against a white supremacist? I mean, Joy, come on, get your facts straight, and then come talk to me. Jesse, don't you love this woman? I'd pay to see her go on Reed's show. That looks uh, we all would. good. I don't know if Joy has the, I don't know what you'd call it, to book her. Cojones. Yes. Um, but she Hutzpah. needs, you, cojones, yes, yeah. the Spanish version, <laughs> Geraldo. But she needs the lieutenant government, governor to be a victim, and she's not a victim, and that's why she's such a threat to Joy Reed and the Democrats. CRT is a stain on the legacy of Martin Luther King. Remember, he aspired to have a colorblind society. You don't judge people by the color of their skin, the content of their character. Joy Reid, all she wants to see is color. She just wants to strip everything else out, and when all you see is color, you don't see grit, you don't see education, oh. you don't see free will. And that's the point. They can't talk about it. That's why it's so stealth. And you know what, Dana? It was like Larry Elder when he ran for governor in the recall in California. Okay, he's an African-American, but he's a white supremacist. Yeah. She is, uh, I think, Jamaican, but she's a white supremacist. Yeah. You know, that, that's just their term for Republicans, isn't it? Yes, apparently, for Joy. And what, the other thing that she said is that this, you, they get elected, and then that's what leads to the really hard stuff, right? <laughs> as, as if electing a black female to Lieutenant Governor of Virginia is a gateway drug to white supremacy. <laughs> this is absurd. And the thing is, there's a, in, in mentoring circles, it, that there's a thing, there's a saying, you need to see her to be her, okay? So this is the idea that when you're a little girl, it's a good idea to, to be exposed to a lot of different ex women executives or report, whatever you want to do in your life, you should be able to, oh, I can do that. Oh, I could do that. So you think about all the young black girls who can watch Winsome Sears and say, well, that's a, another thing that I could aspire to, that I could see myself doing. Mm -hmm. uh, Winsome Sears and the lieutenant governor, I'm sorry, the attorney general who won, they are replacing Democrats who actually were accused of sexual abuse, yeah. sexual assault, right. and wearing blackface. Right. If Winsome Sears and the new, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting his name, the, the new attorney general were Democrats, right now, you know what they would be doing? They would be calling them to run in 2024 because the Democrats, two-thirds of them say they don't want Biden to run. Now, that's what would have happened. You know, Geraldo, AOC and the squad has been totally silent about this, this historic win by Winsome Sears. Uh, and it, they were even asked about it, and they refused to comment. The, the, what does it tell you it, about them? It tells you about ideological blindfolds, because they didn't see Larry Elder for who he, who he was. Look at Tim Scott in South Carolina. He came up with a police reform oh. bill that was yeah. much better than the one the Democrats offered. And it, he brought Republican support implicit in his drafting of the legislation. But he's a black man who's very accomplished. And th their feeling is, and, and you know, I, I go back to, you know, their historic roles that they play. But their feeling is, if you're not a Democrat, you're not black. And I think that that is really, really unfortunate. And that's, that's tragic. And, you know, it's they got to get over it. But it comes from the top, Greg. I mean, that's what Joe Biden said. You know, if you don't like me, then you ain't black if you're an African-American. Joy Reid can't invite her on the show. She has to pretend she doesn't exist because that, yeah. that has to protect their false narrative of white supremacy. If you, sh if, if you actually see this person, your whole, your whole thing falls apart. But what if they are right? in one respect, that there are white voters choosing white supremacy, except there are rich white liberals voting Democrat in Arlington, Fairfax, and Loudoun County. They vote Democrat 
and they vote for policies like higher taxes, right? Climate change agendas, progressive education, anti-police reform. These are all things that a white, rich liberal can afford, but the black working class can't. So here lies the gravest error of the left. They, when they go after the white working class, they're going after the black working class. Yeah. And they, they pretend by choosing uh, these, these, this incredible amount of spending, it's a virtue signal for them. They pretend they're doing well, but they're actually hurting everybody because they've shifted from class to race and they can't get out of it. So in my opinion, it's the rich white liberal who votes Democrat who is the real racist because they are hurting the black working class as they try to hurt the white working class.